Welcome back to the Trade Society Traders Improve podcast. My name is Rolf. I am your host. I'm also the co-founder of Trade Society and Edgebonk.com. And today we're going to talk about the six stages of a trade because ideally when you are taking a trade, there are six stages that every trade should go through and I will show you exactly step by step how to do that. Also, I really want to say thank you for the ongoing support for the podcast on Spotify and iTunes. Our reviews and the review numbers are growing every single week, and I'm really, really happy about that. So thank you for the ongoing support. If you want to find all previous podcast episodes, you can go to tradesitecom slash podcast, or you can find all episodes on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to your podcasts. So let's get into today's podcast episode and I will go through each of the six stages step by step individually in a moment and I will provide you tips and tricks on how to approach that with the most effectiveness. But I just want to give you a quick overview of what the six stages are. The first stage is the planning stage where you have your market selection, you have your trading plans. The second stage is the waiting stage. So you have done your trading plan, but the, the price action is not quite ready yet. The third stage is the actual entry when you are about to enter your trade. The fourth stage is the trade management. So what are you going to do once you're in the trade? Stage number five is the trade exit. When do you actually get out of the trade? And stage six is post trading. It is comprised of reviewing, improvement and just analyzing your trading performance. Why is it so important that you are clear about the six stages and then you have a good plan for each of the six stages? I've been working with traders for around eight years. I've been trading for 14 to 15 years and I've seen that traders who don't have a clear idea about each of the six stages are often facing the same issues. And if you've been trading for a while, this probably will sound very familiar. So a trader who is not very clear about what he's going to do at each of the six stages is going to encounter a lot of noise and have inconsistency in their trading. So you don't have a clear plan about how to exit a trade, what to do in the trade, maybe not even for entries and every trade looks a little bit different. That is a huge problem because it's creating and introducing noise into your trading and inconsistencies. And as we will see later, it is almost impossible to improve as a trader if your trades are differing on a trade to trade basis. So it's really important that we get rid of the noise and have a clear idea or for each of the six stages. Also, a huge problem that many traders face is that they don't have enough confidence to trade well and they are facing a lot of uncertainties. Just imagine you spend all of your time obsessing about the perfect entry, whatever this means, but you have never spent enough time to think about what are you actually going to do once you're in the trade. Because obviously not everything will go, go according to plan. The trade may move a little bit in your favor, then turn around. You have back and forth. There's a noise. News are coming up. You have to deal with weekend closes. And if you have no plan with how to deal with all of those situations, of course, you're going to have a lot of uncertainty. And of course, you're going to lack the confidence to respond to each situation in the right way. So a trader that has confidence issues can often fix those things by just being more precise and being more clear about what to do in each of the six stages. And as I said, it's very, very hard. And I would say it's impossible to improve and have profitable trading results if your trades are different on a trade to trade basis. If your trades are different from trade to trade and your rules and uh, the principles that you apply to the trades are differing, then obviously you cannot find what is working well, what isn't working well. You cannot really ask what are the commonalities between your winning and your losing trades because the trades just have nothing in common. And then you cannot find out what you need to do more because it's already working well over a larger sample size and you cannot find out what isn't working well so that you can turn it off. The only thing that you're going to see is that your results are probably not great and that the trades have nothing in common. You need to have a large enough sample size, 20 to 30 trades, and then look at what do the winning trades in this larger sample size where you followed the same rules, what do they have in common so that you can extract the good things, the things that are working and repeat them and do more of that. So let's go through the six stages one by one. And we are starting with stage one, which is the planning stage. 
before you are even thinking about entering a trade, you have to go through your markets. For me personally, I am mostly a Forex trader. So every morning and every night I go through all of the potential Forex pairs that I'm watching. I'm looking for individual things or specific things such as trend structure, patterns, maybe a diversion, maybe around a moving uh, a Bollinger Band spike, maybe how specific moving average signals are manifesting. And then I'm looking for specific things and if a Forex pair does show certain criteria and is fulfilling something then this will go onto my my watch list and then that's where i'm going to create my trading plan and a trading plan is mostly or should be a if then scenario so if a certain thing happens then i'm going to enter a trade and that is what i found a very good way of writing a trading plan because then you can use the trading plan um, to and just put it next to your chart and you can see did the condition occur is the condition fulfilled and if yes then you can take a trade and if no not so the planning stage is always coming first and that's where most traders um, are all, all already going wrong they don't have this planning stage and they're just jumping around market to market time frame to time frame and just try to stumble over something that is worth trading and especially if you have a day job, you are busy, you don't have as much time that you can dedicate to your trading compared to a full-time trader, then this is actually a very, very important part because you can do your planning maybe the night before and then on your next or in the next day, you don't have to spend a lot of time in front of your charts. You already know kind of what you're looking for and you have a more streamlined and organized approach and then you are not gonna miss as many trades and everything is gonna be a little bit more structured. Stage two is the waiting phase. So you have done your trading plans, you know what you're looking for, and then the hard part for many traders is coming. You just have to sit on your hands and you shouldn't do anything unless there is really something to do. And unless the, the trading plan is 100% fulfilled. And here I would recommend that you are minimizing your screen time. A lot of amateur traders have problems with jumping into trades. They cannot wait for everything to fall into place. Often you probably know that it almost looks ready. We are almost there, but it's not quite there, but you don't want to miss it. Maybe you haven't taken a trade in a while and then you're just going to prematurely jump into the trade and that's going to cost you a lot of money. So reducing the screen time can help you a lot. And what I do is I come back at the, the top of the hour or if I trade the four hour every four hours and then I check is there a trading signal, yes or no. And I also use a lot of trading and price alerts. I use TradingView for most of my charting. And in TradingView you can very easily set up different price alerts at important key areas, at levels. And that is gonna help me reduce screen time but also not miss uh, setups if I am organized. Stage three is the entry and the entry is completely overrated. And as you can see, the entry is just one out of the six stages. And most traders spend pretty much all of their time obsessing about an entry. And an entry is absolutely worthless if the rest is not on point. If you can take the best entry, but if you mess up the trade management or if you take a bad exit, then even the good entry is not gonna help you. And that is very, very important to understand. I think that's the one of the most important takeaways that you can take away from this podcast, that the entry is one part of the strategy, but it's just a single part. And as I've said in the beginning, a lot of traders struggle with confidence and uncertainty because they're obsessing and spending all of their time and energy on the entry, but they spend almost no time on trading or in trade decisions, trade management or exits, and any of that. So that's very, very important. And the entry is very straightforward. It's it's not complicated. You have done your watch list, you have done your trading plan, and the entry is then just asking, are all the criteria from my trading plan fulfilled? And it's a simple yes or no answer. And if there's a yes, then you jump into trade. If there's a no, you don't take the trade and you wait more. Or if uh, things have changed on your charts, you just wait for the next trade. And that's really, really an important factor. And it's, I can't stress the importance enough at saying that the entry, the good and the best, even the best entry doesn't matter if you are messing up what is coming afterwards. 
you can buy whatever apple at the right price at the perfect entry but if you have no plan uh, for your exit and you mess it up during the trade then that's not going to help you stage four is then the trade management what are you going to do during the trade and here you have things such as moving stops moving targets adding to a trade taking partial profits you have to monitor news you have to make sure that you're monitoring the weekend what are you going to do do you hold a trade over the weekend then you have to assess the general situation currently for example currently when there is the ukraine situation going on things can change very quickly over a weekend and then monday morning you may occur huge gaps and that is everything that you have to factor in into your trade management decisions so i think trade management is very over overlooked and i see it in the traders that i work with is that most of them before they come to us haven't really spent time thinking about what they're going to do in the trade and then they take uh, they take a good entry and they have done their entry checklist but they have never really thought about what they're going to do in the trade and then the big problem here is that if you maybe take the best entry possible but you then mess it up mess it up afterwards you are probably going to contribute your failure to a bad entry and then you're going to just go back to square one and you think okay i just need to have a better entry and then my problems will be fixed whereas in reality the entry may be fine but you just need to focus on the other things so overlooking the end uh, the management and overlooking the exit is often going to cause traders also to uh, misjudge or misinterpret their trading results and then contribute failure to the wrong parts of the trading system stage five is the exit when do you get out and there are obviously things that you that need to go into the consideration um, taking an exit because the exit is the final outcome of the trade and the exit actually determines the outcome of the trade you can save a bad entry by taking a good exit so for example maybe you are your entry wasn't good and you broke your rules but if you recognize it quickly and you take a quick exit and you don't let um, the trade get out of hand then that's good as well that is very important uh, whereas on the other hand if you take a good entry but the exit is completely messed up then maybe you're even going to lose money on a trade that should have been profitable so it's really important that you understand um, the importance of the exit because that's the one that is really determining the outcome and whether you have a losing a winning trade a good or a bad trade also problems that are often occurring around ent uh, exits are things such as over trading revenge trading chasing the price after losing trade and in general being emotional after a trade so managing your emotional state after an exit is also very very important the final stage but a very very important part is what are you going to do after your trade and here usually things such as reviewing and uh, performance review and performance analysis come in so you shouldn't really look at every single trade and probably on a trade to trade basis you're not going to find major revelations but after your trading week or after 10 20 30 trades it's very important that you always analyze your sample size in a meaningful way so first of all every trade should be in a trading journal and i do hope that you're all using edgewonk and in your trading journal after 20 30 trades you're gonna see very important uh, statistics you're gonna have uh, very meaningful findings such as what is your biggest weakness that's always the, the starting point for every journaling routine where, where are you losing the most money and also a trading journal should help you keep in check it, it should be a like an accountability partner in edgewonk for example we have designed edgewonk in a way that you have accountability tools such as uh, the tilt meter or the new milestones so that there are specific challenges built into the trading journal that help you uh, focus on better trading practices so making sure that you are a disciplined trader and if not the trading journal and edgewonk specifically will show you why or when you are not disciplined enough and how much money you are leaving on the table but also other things such as management decisions how much money are you making or losing by actively managing your trade 
And is actively managing your trade the right thing or should you just do nothing when you're in a trade? And therefore, the stage six, the trade review, the trade analysis, the journaling review is a very, very important part, obviously, of ongoing improvement as a trader and just finding things that you can improve. And then you have a holistic trading strategy. You have a holistic approach. All of the six stages have been taken care of, you know, exactly at every single stage what to do. And that is a good exercise. That's what I make all of my students do when they come to us is to really think about every single stage. And in, in the beginning, it's important. You're not going to get it 100% right. M you're probably going to miss some things. And the most important part here is that you at least get going. Sit down and for each of the six stages, write down a trading plan or write down rules or thoughts that that you ha have that are applicable to your trading. And even if they're not perfect, at least it's a starting point. And over time, as you keep using your your six stage checklist, then you're going to find things that you can improve as well. And it's a, it's just a process, but it's really, really important that you get going, you eliminate the noise, you have more confidence in your trading and you know really at every single step of your trade what to do, when to do it, how to do it and also why to do it. And then that's going to help you just keep improving week after week, trade after trade. And that's it for this week's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, leave a review, leave a like, leave a comment if you're watching this on YouTube. And then you will hear from me next Thursday with a new podcast episode.